RuneScape 3. The original RuneScape. A game once loved by many, through controversial updates and changes. Now a game loved by few, and hated by most. In this series, with a fresh account and a new start, I want to explore what the game has to offer, focusing on differences to old school RuneScape, and what's changed from that game we all used to love. Let's together see if the game has hidden gems and interesting content that the average person won't find without playing the game. And what's the appeal to keep playing this game for so many people? Is it refused to change and start over? Or is there something we're all missing? Let's find out together. This. This is what pain looks like. We lost hella clips. I had nearly a whole video recorded and Camtasia just decided to corrupt the file. I tried everything. I don't want to get too technical, but I went into the file. There was things missing. There was no audio. The video was unrecoverable. I'm pretty upset. I'll be honest, it's demotivated me, there's uh, some key things I probably will be missing from this series, but I can probably go over again. Luckily, mainly what we did was quests, and the quests we did were really old ones. So we did a total of 22 quest points, a soul's bane hasn't changed, priest in peril hasn't changed, just graphically, tribal totem, exactly the same, tree gnome village, fight arena, the grand tree, Goblin Diplomacy and Waterfall Quest. Them ones there haven't changed, but that's where we got the 40 attack, uh, 30 strength, and 41 defense. And we've upgraded to the green dehyde. Uh, Demon Slayer we did, which is completely reworked. Actually, I can show you the sword at least. Um, it's been made into a really novice quest, but fully reworked. It's an amazing quest now. It's a shame I can't fucking show you. But here's the sword. Look at look at what they've done with the uh, the silver light. The silver light looks amazing. But yeah, unfortunately, we lost them clips. But I'm willing to uh, go forward. All we missed was 10 quests and 165 levels. Um, one of the most notable ones, I'm comparing it to the last video, is uh, Agility. That is literally mainly from Treasure Hunter. Every time you do quests, you get the keys. Any bonus XP, XP lamps, I chuck them on Agility. We got all the way to 50 because there's not much options until 52. There's, if we go to courses, there's fuck all courses. Just all the really weird ones until 52 when you get to the wilderness and then you can get some really good XP. But anything I covered in them recordings... With pro uh, regards to ways to play and learning and stuff, I'll just recover again in this video. Uh, just the main things we lost are the quests and some of the uh, the stats there. Oh, also we have the uh, treasure hunter log, which tracks your clue scrolls. So if we read that, we did do our first two easy clue scrolls. We got a black beret, if that's how you say it, and this spiky helm. They both sold for 500k each. An interesting fact while doing clue scrolls, if you just right click on it and press dig, you're actually able to dig for your clue scroll. Hey, so we finished an easy, the last two we got a unique. Let's see if uh, lightning can strike three times in a row. And that is worth 700k. Why? Is this thing worth money? Is that tradable? Reroll tokens, that means I can reroll Oh no, it's this. This is worth money. 700k for a Willow Comp bow, by the way. Um, if you're wondering why uh, the uniques are worth so much, even though that's only a Willow Comp bow, is because um, of this skill here. We have Invention, where it's a skill where you destroy stuff. And if you destroy Clue Scroll items, which are unique to Clue Scrolls, you get like some sort of like leftover thing for destroying stuff. And the Clue ones... Uh, are pretty useful, so that's why that's worth money. People will buy it, destroy it, get the component for destroying it, yeah. So you may have noticed my fire making's gone from 30 to 47. It's literally just become my downtime skill. If I need to bank stand for a bit while I run and do something, I just grab some logs, you know, chuck them in a the fire. Sort of my uh, AFK skill at the moment. A feature I do really like though is this right here. If you click this, it brings up your adventure. 
and it gives you recommended quests that you can do, skills to train, little targets. Um, but another feature I like here is quests is you can sort them by all different things. Their ages, release dates, lengths, how hard they are, progress. But release dates, this has to be my favorite. Um, I'm probably going to keep this on as well. I was using this when I was doing the quests that we done prior to losing the recordings. Because what I was doing was I was working my way through ones generally at the top of this list here. Because they're really old. But what a trend I have noticed is they have reworked. Gone back and reworked a lot of the old ones. Like Cook's Assistant when we did that. Um, Shield of Arrow obviously being able to do it with one person. I've heard Imp Catcher is completely different now. Uh, yeah, so we're just sort of working my way through the older ones. I'm not doing them in a particular order. I'm not trying to complete each section, but... This general uh, really old quest is uh, what we've been doing. So when you start the game, you do the tutorial if you don't say you're an experienced player and that run throughs a lot of stuff. And then once you finish the tutorial, you go on a pathfinder, which is like a tutorial in the real world once you get into the RuneScape world. Uh, myself, I did skip it, but I have found a way to put it back on. If you go to your adventure log and go to paths, uh, it's right here and there's actually uh, rewards you can get from it. Uh, one of them being the some keys and the Pathfinder outfit, which is this, which is like a low-level tribrid. So it is worth uh, checking out. I might uh, get around to uh, finishing this. So the stage we're up to, he's uh, said he wants to show me what the lodestones are. And you have this little like tutorial going through. So we'll give that a crack and see what happens when we finish it. Even fully runs, you, runs through what a bank is and how the bank works. So here's something I've been meaning to go through, daily challenges, and it's totally not something I went through in the Lost Cliffs. But you go into your adventure log and here you have challenges. You receive one of these a day, I think I've been given a tutorial one though, because I'm doing the Pathfinder. But right here it will generate one challenge a day, you complete the challenge and then you come back handy and get a reward and XP in that skill. Definitely something I'll be doing every day and definitely something I recommend everyone else should be doing every day. Well, here's a big thing some of you are probably wondering about, and that is mining and smithing. It has been completely reworked. As you can see, it's just sort of swinging away, and I'm getting ores and some random shit. Um, this is something I'm probably going to dedicate nearly a whole video to, but I've got to learn it myself. I don't fully understand it myself yet, but we'll get to the mining and smithing rework at some point. So part of the Pathfinder, he's got a quest to me, the Shadow Over Ashdow, released in 2014. Uh, not done this quest yet, so let's uh, let's check it out. Well, my tip to you doing this is to uh, bring food. This is a full-fledged boss fight. Pretty interesting mechanics as well. Like you got these tentacles that slap down. You got that ability you need to dodge. Tentacles to dodge, which I just felt miserably during the recording to dodge absolutely everything. <laughs> but yeah, it's a full-blown uh, boss fight with a lot of interesting mechanics. Uh, there's these uh, poisons that drop down, and you got to dodge them as well. A lot going on. A lot you got to pay attention to. So I just looked it up and after you kill this boss it actually becomes a weekly thing you can do. You can repeat it weekly and get some bonus XP. And that is the uh, the quest done. So once you have finished the Pathfinder, if you just go to your settings and then there's a bit that says hero, you can go into achievements. I'm assuming this is where you complete the comp cape because you've got the quest cape, mass cape, comp cape, comp cape trimmed. And this literally has everything you could ever do. But on the summary, there's achievement paths, which is this basically you could just continue playing this game like Pathfinder. And there's there's loads of different ones. There's like Road, Road to God Wars, Boss in Pathfinders. There's just so much to do. You could just play this game as if it's a story. So we had just sort of rounded out the fire making to 50, and there it is. And I also saw an option to burn bones. So I wanted to test that out. So that's 
a normal bow. You don't have the ability to burn bones on a bonfire. You can unlock this ability through Halloween event. Or a rare drop from ghosts. Okay, I guess that's something uh, we might unlock in future, killing some ghosts. Oh, uh, Druidic Ritual has uh, changed quite a bit. It's uh, basically, uh, you got to make a special potion, but it's completely different, and it's voiced over. Definitely worth trying out. And there it is. Access to hub lore, I guess. I don't know if it works the same on here as it does on old school, but boom, quest done. Don't forget. Another little ease of life thing if you clean herbs. It's all mag. So on our way to do Merlin's Crystal, I did decide to get 30 magic beforehand because it unlocks this ability Surge, which just generally helps you get around quicker. And here we have Merlin's Crystal done. Hasn't changed whatsoever, but you know, it's done. And here you see procrastination at its finest. Avoiding quests, but at least we're getting something done. 65 making, back to questing I guess. Uh, that should be Plague City done. Unlocking teleport to West Ardoyne, but you know, who the fuck cares, we have lodestones. But a lot of mining XP from that, up to 25. This jungle potion quest hasn't changed whatsoever, still shit. So it should be another quest done, not too useful. Can make cannonballs now, no idea if they're any good to make for money in RS3, but you know, it's another quest and it's free crafting XP. Got ourselves up to 13. So someone did say in the comments that right here they've got this reward system for questing. Every 25 quest points you get a reward and I've got 60 so that means two rewards. So I'm going to have a look and I'll get back to you guys once I know what you get. So I'm assuming this is like armor and weapon pet maybe to show it off and I have no idea what this is. There's a ring and some other stuff. Um, it says 75 is my next reward so I don't know if, yeah I've claimed something here actually I'm assuming this is it. Let's, uh, let's take a roll. Roll the dice, we get uh, 250k and a black shield. Let's roll it again. We get another 250k and black. Oh, hello. That sells. How much is that worth? 350k. Not bad. But the other side of it, I'm assuming, is the shop. And I have no idea what this stuff does. So, uh, what happens when we click one? Unlock. Lorehound pet. Okay. Upgrade to the pet, I'm assuming. Let's just get the pet, why not? I don't have a pet yet. And the most AIDS quest ever. Sheep herder. Done. That's a lot of quest points, though. So, we just got ourselves 52 agility from uh, some treasure hunter shit. But we now got the wilderness course unlocked, so we're actually going to be able to train the skill. So just got ourselves 66 uh, fire making. Pretty going to wrap the episode up here. Ideally, I do want them to be a bit longer, but with nearly losing a whole video. <laughs> and I've uh, been quite busy IRL today as well. I'm going to upload this one now. But thanks for your amazing support in the first and second. Let's see if we can keep it up on this one. Let's see if we can get ourselves 30 likes. And yeah, thanks for watching and catch you next time.